After over a year of waiting, winter has finally arrived this summer with the icy, fiery new episode of Game of Thrones Season 7. After the viciously satisfying opening sequence, the episode favored exposition over action, laying groundwork for the events to come. While there may not have been any ultra-shocking deaths or major battle scenes, there were plenty of subtle and not-so-subtle Easter eggs and interesting references to be found, even without access to the restricted section of the library. Shall we begin? Thanks to Bran and his handy visions, we get the chance to spy on the Night King and his ever-growing army of the dead. While most of the visions we've seen so far have taken place in the past, we know that Bran is capable of seeing the future, as back in Season 6 he saw a flicker of Cersei's wildfire mayhem before it actually transpired. When the camera reveals those three zombie giants marching behind the Night King, the one front and center has only one eye. This must be one one, the giant that Ramsay shot through the eye at Winterfell. Still not convinced? According to IMDb, both 1-1 and the White Giant were played by the same actor, Ian White. This is a massive revelation for the future of the war between the Others and the humans. First, it shows that the Army of the Dead will definitely find their way south of the Wall, and soon. Secondly, it shows that any dead people or creatures are eligible for reanimation, not just those that have been killed by White Walker magic. Finally, seeing giants kissed by ice makes you wonder what other sort of mythical creatures the Night King might be able to bring over to the dark side. Dare we even suggest it? But dragons. Back in Season 2, when Cersei captured and abused Roz, mistakenly believing her to be Shay, Tyrion promised his sister, I will hurt you for this. A day will come when you think you're safe and happy, and your joy will turn to ashes in your mouth and you will know the debt is paid. Finally, after the death of all three of her children, Cersei tells Jaime, I loved them, I did. But their ashes now, we're still flesh and blood. Tyrion might not have caused Cersei's anguish himself, but one way or another, the debt is paid. The old King's Guard has now become the Queen's Guard, and the new title demands a new look. Here we see the mountain modeling the latest southern armor for winter. The glittery gold of summer has been swapped for a deep, dark, ominous shade of black, and the tunic sticking out beneath his plate is made of the same leather eyelet as his fair queen's new favorite gowns. The mountain is still wearing his signature three-ridged helmet, but now the metal covers far less of his face, as if to say, just try and stab me, I triple dog dare you. The crest on the front is perhaps the most interesting. After being brought back to life by Kyburn, the mountain slash Sir Strong never wore the crest of House Clegane or House Strong or even the Kingsguard, opting for a simple design with a sword instead, symbolizing his status as a human weapon. Now, the crest on the front of his breastplate is nearly identical to Cersei's crown, signifying his exclusive loyalty to his queen. For hands of gold are always cold, but a woman You'd have to be blinder than Aemon Targaryen to miss Ed Sheeran's cameo in this episode. It's a new one. But while it might have felt too obvious to be believable, the song Sheeran and his companions were singing is actually a George R. R. Martin original from the books. In Book 3, A Storm of Swords, Simon Silvertongue writes the song to blackmail Tyrion after finding out about his affair with Shay. The show even referenced the lyrics when Tyrion murders Shay, strangling her with a golden chain. But now, the phrase hands of gold is even more applicable to golden-handed Jaime and his barely secret affair with his shame and his bliss, Cersei. If Sam's poop soup montage is any indication, studying at the Citadel is hardly as much fun as going to Hogwarts. But with former Harry Potter actor in the role of the Archmaester, the opportunity for hiding a Harry Potter Easter egg was too good for Benioff and Wise to pass up. Both Sam and Tom Riddle, aka Young Voldemort, want to access the restricted section in the library at the Citadel and at Hogwarts. And who do they go to for permission? The Archmaester slash Professor Slughorn, both played by Jim Broadbent. They're both turned down. When people make sweeping generalizations in Westeros, it's a pretty safe bet that the opposite is going to turn out to be true. The Archmaester was so convinced that nothing could possibly be bad enough to bring down the wall, it seems like some serious foreshadowing for its imminent demise. Plus, he's not entirely correct. He tells Sam, The wall has stood through it all, and every winter that ever came has ended. He includes the Long Night in this, when in fact the wall was built after the Long Night ended. The last time the White Walkers were in the south, Bran the Builder put up the wall to keep them out. If the others want to come south again, the wall is going to be the first thing to go. <laughs> Book readers will recognize a familiar image of Sandor Clegane from this episode, the Gravedigger. 
While the Hound returned to the show alive and well back in season 6, book readers are still not completely positive of his fate after his duel with Brienne of Tarth. One of the popular theories, however, is that he is in fact alive, paying penance for his crimes by digging graves as a novice at the monastery on the Quiet Isle. His dutiful grave digging in this episode for the father and daughter he had robbed back in season 4 was almost certainly a nod to that popular theory. Back in May, fan forums were buzzing with talk of Arya carrying a very familiar Valyrian steel dagger in a set of promo pics. The dagger looked exactly like the cat's paw dagger, the one belonging to Littlefinger which was used in the assassination attempt on young Bran. Last we saw the dagger, it was in Littlefinger's possession, but if the promo photos are to be believed, it will be making its way to a girl very shortly. As a Valyrian steel dagger, there was always a good chance it would play a role in slicing up White Walkers, but now that Sam has flipped past it in a book at the Citadel, it seems almost a certainty. The cat's paw dagger isn't the only interesting thing to be found in Sam's restricted book. As he leaves through the pages, he also passes over a few paragraphs on the cure for grayscale. Apparently, ingesting a bit of dragonglass has the potential to halt the sickness and cure a patient who is strong enough to withstand the side effects. Will Sam be the one to cure Jorah? It's a theory we've heard before, most famously from actor Jack Gleason, Joffrey Baratheon, back in December 2016. He predicted that ultimately there would never be a winner to the Great Game, and everyone would need to dismantle the Iron Throne to use the Valyrian steel swords within it to fight against the White Walkers. Now, Samuel Tarly has rediscovered and very clearly reminded us all that Dragonstone happens to sit on a massive deposit of dragonglass, that other material that can be used to kill White Walkers. While Sam told Gilly that the dragonglass was under the mountain, the look of the stone throne itself seems to indicate that that too might be made of the same precious material, more valuable now than gold. It would create a tidy metaphor if both thrones had to be torn apart in order to serve a greater purpose in the end.